going everybody? Thank you for joining me here on Teak and Builds. My name is Ty Campbell and we've got another off-road buggy project on deck that we're going to dive right into. We're going to put together a brand new Techno EV48 2.0 8-scale four-wheel drive electric buggy to go with our EV410.2 10-scale four-wheel drive electric buggy that we already finished in the previous episodes. We're going to go through getting this car completely ready into race form. We're going to assemble our chassis. We're going to go through some setup. We're going to install an RX8 Gen 3 with a T8 Gen 3 1900 kV motor and throw a Tekken T250 steering servo in there. We'll cover some soldering tips. We'll cover all of your initial setup tips to get the car running. So let's get right into it. Let's get this box opened up, lay out all of our parts, see what we're working with. We'll get our tools out. We'll start doing some wrenching. We got a wing, bag full of all the diffs, our arms. It's like most of the chassis stuff is in there. Another bag of parts with all of our shock equipment. Techno body, our chassis plate right here. All of our shock fluids and diff fluids, some Loctite, some black high pressure grease. And the all important user manual with some stickers. Now we're gonna turn all of this into an eight scale buggy chassis. Let's get some tools out. We'll bust these parts bags open. We'll start with our differentials. So the first part of our build is our three gear differentials. And these are a fluid filled diff they have two sun gears, a couple spider gears, and they sit on these cross shafts. That allows your wheels to diff from each other. So, like on my car, you can spin these opposite from each other. This means that this isn't a full locked four wheel drive system. It's highly tunable. You can change the diff fluid weights in there to get the desired performance effect out of your ride. These are all pretty simple. They all go together exactly the same other than the center diff has that plastic spur gear, which is also the differential cap. The front and rear have these metal ring gears and they are 40 and 12 tooth. So there's a 40 tooth ring count here and a 12 tooth on the pinion. We'll get to those when we get our gearboxes put together. I'm gonna go with a 5,000 in the front, 7,000 in the center, and 3,000 in the rear. That's kind of my go-to eight scale setup. And so far it's working pretty good. And then I tune it for the racing surface once I get a feel for the car. So we're gonna throw all of these together real quick. We'll get them filled. We'll mark them with some silver Sharpie and then we'll move on to getting the rest of our stuff put together. First thing we have to do is put ample amount of grease on this O-ring and this outdrive shaft. This is everything your outdrive rides on while it's spinning at higher PM, so you need to make sure you have lots of grease in there. We'll get that bearing on the outside, drop our washer in to retain our O-ring, and then if you're lucky, you'll get the cross pin in there to line up. Now we can drop our sun gear in, make sure that that lines up and drops onto that pin fully. Next to go in are our cross shafts and spider gears. These key into each other and they're a little bit tricky to get lined up, but once you get everything to drop down in there, give it a quick little spin and make sure that nothing is binding. Now we need the bearing on our diff cap spur gear. Again, grease up this shaft and this O-ring. Washer goes on, then the pin, just like the other side of our diff cup. Drop our sun gear on, done. Now we have our center diff halves. Everything spins nice and free. You wanna make sure that the spider gears in here aren't binding up. Be a real bummer if you fill it up with diff fluid and then find out that it's locked up later after you screw everything together and have to deal with that mess. We're gonna fill this up with fluid now. We'll screw it together and we'll knock our other two diffs out and then we'll move on to our front and rear gearboxes. So with our whole diff assembled, now the last thing we're gonna do is fill it up with fluid. I'm gonna put 7,000 weight CST in this one, and you wanna fill this all the way until the spider gears are just barely covered, and let it sit for a little bit to flatten out. Once it's flattened out, we can take both halves of our diff and put them together. Make sure the sun gear doesn't come out of position, 
and then I like to run these screws in most of the way with the driver and then finish them by hand so I reduce my chances of stripping them out in the future. Last thing I do is mark it, so I'm gonna put 7K on the housing with some silver Sharpie. So that's all of our differentials. Smooth, oiled up, ready to go. That's bag A and B of our EB48 2.0 build. Now we're gonna move on to bag C, which is our front gearbox, and then bag D after that is our rear gearbox. We'll get both front and rear clips of this car fully assembled and ready to go on our main chassis, and then we'll work on everything else after that. Putting our gearbox together is fairly straightforward. We need to drop our pinion shaft bearings in here first, then our pinion gear can go in, and we'll want to grease up this pinion and ring gear really well because again, high RPM, these are going to get hot, we need that lubrication inside of our gearbox. I like to lock tight my set screws on the outdrive, you do not want this coming loose out on the track. We're using the black high pressure grease included in the Techno kit. And then you're gonna to wanna to shim the differential. It tells you how many shims to use, which is two. And it might change a little bit depending on your gearbox. Just make sure that it spins nice and free. Then we can clamp our other half of the gearbox on. Again, make sure it spins free. And we'll run all these screws in to tighten everything down, hold it together. I really like that these gearboxes have a grease door on the bottom, lets you get in there and re-grease them without having to pull the whole differential apart. Pretty neat little feature. Now we can bolt our front shock tower onto this front clip assembly. Be really careful when you're running these screws in with a driver if you choose to do so. You don't want to strip them out, it's always a good idea to run them most of the way down and then tighten them by hand. Now our rear gearbox was the exact same process other than the small universal shaft, the shock tower was different, and then the wing stay had to be bolted on. So that's our two gearboxes right there. We're gonna go ahead and move on and get our arms and our sway bars, CV joints, hubs, all that good stuff put together. Turn these into full front and rear clips, and then we'll be ready to bolt them onto our car. Putting our sway bar together is pretty straightforward. Make sure you use a shock tool or be really careful with pliers so you don't mar up the balls in these end links. You don't want them binding up while we're out on the track. And the job of a sway bar is to control the body roll of the car. So thicker sway bars are gonna slow that down and keep the car more flat. Thinner sway bars are going to let the car roll more left to right and let each wheel do its thing independent of the one the other end of the sway bar is hooked to. Now our C and D block inserts, or pills sometimes they're referred to, are responsible for holding our inner hinge pins, which holds our rear suspension arms on. And there are lots of different positions you can place these in. There are lots of pills included in the kit, so you can change your anti-squat and your rear toe. We're just gonna go with factory settings, which is 1.5 degrees of anti-squat and three degrees rear toe. I really like that the arms on these Techno kits have metal bushing inserts that go in the arms for the hinge pin to ride on. This gives everything a really free, fluid suspension movement with minimal amount of binding. And these are our droop screws. They go in from the underside of the arm and then you adjust them to change your shock droop. We'll go over that in the next video when we set the car up for the track. Now we can start putting our rear hubs together. These inserts change your roll center. I'm just going with right in the middle. That is the factory setting. And then we can pop our bearings and our crush spacer in here. And this crush spacer keeps everything from binding when you tighten up your wheel nut. Now the outer arm inserts are responsible for changing the static toe and the active toe. I went with zero to start out. Now we can assemble our CV joints. We're gonna grease it up real good, insert the barrel into the ball end, put that into our stub shaft, and hopefully line that pin up and get it pressed through. Now this can slide through our rear hub bearings, keeps that pin nice and secure in there so it's not gonna fall apart. Then our hex can go on the outside, line up the hole, put this pin through our hex, 
and then we're gonna wanna Loctite the set screw that holds this pin in. Now we can put our outer hinge pin through these inserts on our arm, put the recommended amount of spacers in place. This is gonna change the wheelbase of your car. This is another one of those tuning options in the Techno kit. So I'm just going with factory settings here. Again, that shock tool coming in handy, popping balls into ball ends. This tool is awesome, it is worth every penny. So with our rear camber links all assembled, we can go ahead and throw them on, making sure that the little notch marks are on the left side or the right side of the car, whichever you prefer. You want them the same on both sides so that no matter which one you're adjusting, you have to turn them the same way to get the same desired effect. Well, this build's going extremely smooth, just like I thought it would. We've got our front clip and our rear clip done. We just gotta put together our servo saver and our bell cranks and get our steering links on there. And then this thing will be ready to bolt to our chassis. So let's knock that steering system out real quick and then we'll move on to getting the rest of the car put together. So the first part of our steering rack is our servo saver and it does exactly what I just said. It saves your servo. We're gonna set this to factory settings, but basically what happens here is this servo saver is allowed to take heavy hits and this spring will take a lot of that shock load off of your servo gear train. It's definitely gonna keep your servo running in optimal condition a lot longer. I highly recommend everybody use a servo saver and make sure it's set correctly. Our steering system on the Techno is a dual bell crank design. It rides on bearings, it's extremely smooth, and it's highly tunable. Everything from Ackerman, which is gonna change the aggressiveness of the steering, to the bump steer with the provided washers in the kit. We're gonna go with factory settings, it's four washers. And that wraps up our front end. Well, good progress today. That is all I'm gonna be able to get done for the day. So we're gonna go home, get some rest. We'll start fresh in the morning. So these shocks are awesome, they go together really easy. I like to use Protect Grease down in our shock cartridge. That just helps lube up our O-rings and give our shocks real fluid movement and keeps the friction down. Little tip, I like to put some shock oil on the O-ring inside of our thumb adjuster for our preload. And then we can use, again, our Techno Shock tool to hold the shock body and thread this guy on. Putting that silicone shock oil on there is gonna allow it to thread on a lot more easily. You're also gonna wanna lube the shock shaft before you insert it into the shock body. You don't want to tear those O-rings in the lower shock cartridge. Now we're going to fill it with the kit oil. You want to fill it up all the way to the top. I like to run the shaft up and down a few times just to get some air bubbles to come up near the surface, but this is an emulsion shock so there is going to be air. Now with our cap on, we're going to bleed it. You're going to want to hold the shock at about a 45 degree angle like so. Push the shaft all the way in and you want to see a tiny bit of shock fluid come out the bleeder hole. As soon as you see that, leave the shaft all the way compressed, reinsert the bleeder screw and then pump the shock 20 times as per the techno instructions. Pull the shaft down, remove the bleeder screw, then push the shaft in again to bleed any excess oil out, reinsert the screw with the shock fully compressed and you should have a fairly dead shock when you're done. You don't want it to pull back out if you compress it all the way and you don't want it to pull in if you pull it all the way out. Now we can put the shock boot on our shock. This is gonna protect our shock shaft and screw our shock eyelet on the bottom of the shaft. So those are our shocks, real straightforward and simple to build. I love the way these went together. They're extremely smooth and easy to bleed. Last thing you gotta do is just pop the springs on and then the lower spring cup and secure it with this little grub screw that holds your spring cup from flying off way out on the track. That has a really awesome feature because we all hate losing those. Home stretch on this build, guys. We're getting really close. We're gonna throw our front clip on the chassis real quick along with the front brace. This is what controls some of your chassis flex. and our billet aluminum motor mount. We're gonna Loctite the screws that go into this aluminum motor mount because you don't want these coming loose and dragging in the dirt. I really like the center diff mount in this car. It is really simple to take the diff in and out with just this top cage. So we're gonna drop the front drive shaft and the center diff in at the same time. Place the diff cage over the top of the mounts. Lock it down with the screws. 
Now we just line up our rear universal shaft and our rear clip and get that to snap down onto our chassis. Install the rear clip brace, and run all the screws in from underneath. Now we got our receiver box, battery tray, our mud guards, and our ESC servo plate, which we're not gonna screw down yet because there's gonna be a little trick I'm gonna show you with that later. Now we can get our shocks on, and these shocks have color-coded screws on the arm. Remember the black always goes on the right side, it is a right-hand thread. The silver screws go on the left-hand side, they are a left-hand thread. And they do this just to keep these from backing out. So once we get our shocks on, give it a squish because that's just what you do. Last piece of this puzzle is our wing. I went with a black wing and we are finished with this car. That's another killer Techno RC build in the books. I really enjoyed putting these EB48s together. These kits are top quality from start to finish. The instruction manual is awesome. It's illustrated really well. There's no confusion about where anything goes. So kudos to Techno for the awesome instructions and the awesome quality on these kits. We're only halfway there with this one. We've still got a lot of work to do. Next time we're going to install our RX-8 Gen 3, our 1900 T8 Gen 3, and our T250 steering servo. We'll get some wheels and tires on here. The body should be done by the time I'm wrapped up with all that stuff. So once we get this thing all dialed and get an initial setup in all of our electronics and on our chassis, we'll take it down to Eagle Hills Raceway and hit the track burn some milliamp hours with it. Hope you're enjoying watching as much as I'm enjoying wrenching on this awesome kit. If you like the video, click that like button down there at the bottom. Leave a question or a comment if you got something to say about this build or just want to chat. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next episode where we finish this guy up. I'm Ty Campbell. We'll see you next time.